So today I'm talking to Datuk Sri Panlima uh, Tio, who is a, a practicing lawyer in Kota Kitabalu. He was also the president of the LDP party in Sabah. Uh, and during the Musa Aman administration, he was special task uh, minister. He was in fact in charge of the uh, state level MA63 committee. And that's the reason why I'm talking to him today. So good morning, Datuk. Good morning, Prof. Thank you very much for coming to this podcast. So Datuk, can you explain to us uh, basically uh, how does the Sabah government during your time in, 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 in the state administration, how do they view the issue MA63? Uh, well, Prof, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you for inviting me to be part of this podcast. Uh, it's an honor to be interviewed by you. <laughs> no, uh. um, well, um, we, we don't know when can we meet again, but uh, hopefully soon. <laughs> right. So you're asking about um, the Sabah government? Yes. The Sabah government, MS63 commi uh, committee, state level one that was led by you. You were the chair of that committee? That's right. That's right. Uh, in fact, the Musa Aman administration uh, was very concerned with the issue of MA63. Uh, that's why uh, it's been brought up to the state cabinet many times and uh, as a result of which uh, the uh, revision of Sabah right under MA63 was set up. Uh, I was the chairman and in my committee we have also incorporated uh, some of the senior government officers uh, including the ex attorney general, senior lawyers, professionals, technocrats and whatnot. Um, we have started the ball rolling uh, uh, by, you know, talking to our counterparts in the federal government. And uh, in fact, there was already a steering committee uh, as well as working committee form, a joint committee, jointly chaired by myself uh, and the, uh, uh, the, the counterpart in KL. And uh, nationally, there is a steering committee chaired by uh, Datu Sri Panglima Anifa Aman, who was then a foreign minister. Yeah. And so things were working uh, quite well, but then, uh, to be frank, uh, in order to see results, uh, I think uh, it was moving a bit slow. We have seen certain results, but uh, we were moving. So what slow. were the issues that concern your committee? What were the issues that you were looking at? Can you be more specific? Uh, well, um, there's a big range of issues we looked into. Um, uh, one of them is, of course, the cash payment for petroleum. Yeah. And uh, delegation of uh, other federal powers into the state, uh, you know, including the administrative powers, uh, regulatory powers. Uh, one of them is the uh, legislative and regulatory powers on the generation and distribution of gas and electricity in the state. This is something that uh, Sarawak has maintained until today. But in the year 1982 or 83, the Brujaya government of Sabah actually handed it back to KL. And uh, we're pursuing that. Uh, that's one of them, yes. And, and, another and also, thing did you look at the wider picture of the legality of the MA63? Did you look at the wider issue about the, 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 the Malaysia Act itself? Yes. Um, a lot of people seems to be arguing that the uh, uh, MA63 is an international treaty and some other political activists are of the view that uh, uh, it is not a treaty, not recognized and therefore uh, the whole thing is null and void. You know, the whole thing about formation of Malaysia has no legal basis and therefore it is free for all. Mm. Uh, you know, you have conflicting views on this. But my view is that we look into the definition of treaty. Yeah? International treaty is defined as an agreement between uh, sovereign states and international or international organizations 
um, such as the United Nations and uh, you know this this sovereign states must have been given the authorization and uh, uh, authorization to to make uh, the treaty to enter into the treaty yeah and and when we look at this uh, Sabah Sarawak uh, at that time when the Malaysia agreement was Malaysia agreement was signed they were not sovereign states even until today prof Sabah and Sarawak are not sovereign states we are part of the Federation of Malaysia and therefore um, I'm of the view that it is not an international treaty uh, under which you can seek for legal redress from international court when you talk about seeking redress uh, from international court for example international court of justice uh, several criteria has to be made out firstly of course the parties must be sovereign states and secondly you know the parties to the disputes must have voluntarily submit to the power and jurisdiction mm -hmm. and agree to be bound by ruling of the icj sure. so does I this mean does, does this mean that if you want legal remedy you have to do it through the malaysian courts I would think that uh, perhaps the Malaysian civil courts uh, are not the perfect forum uh, to, to hear the matter, the disputes between the state and the federal government. But then the thing is that there is no better forum. There is no better forum than the, our, than the Malaysian civil courts. Mm. Mm. But assuming assuming that, that if I were to hire you to file a lawsuit on on the Malaysia and the grievances of the of the Sabah people, what sort of legal questions would you be asking? Because when you go to court to seek remedy, right? Obviously, you must have a legal question. It cannot be the whole act. You cannot litigate on the whole Malaysia act, right? You have to. You must have a legal question. How would you go about it? You know, much as I'm a lawyer, uh, I am more of a political realist. Prof, mm. I feel that, you know why I said that uh, the court is not a perfect forum and yet we have no better forum than the Malaysian court. I'm of the view that it is only a matter of last resort that we go to court. Yeah? So the political solution is always better? I believe so, yeah. The, uh, you know, issues surrounding MA63 can be best resolved by political evidence. Uh, political means. So this is where you talk about your work in the committee. So besides the the, the things like uh, electricity, all those things, uh, basically what we're talking about, decentralization, uh, which is Kuala Lumpur ceding the powers back to the state government. What other contentious issues were, were discussed? Uh, one of them is uh, regarding the validity of Territorial Seas Act 2012. Mm. Uh, that is quite crucial because what the Territory Seas Act seeks to do is to redefine the boundary of the states. Yeah? And according to Article 2 of the Federal Constitution, in order to alter boundary of the states, you must first obtain consent of the state government concern. Mm. And that consent must be expressed in the form of uh, a law passed by the state assembly and in this case before the passing of the territory seas act uh, there wasn't any consent obtained from the sabah and sarawak government mm. and therefore it is my view that you know the whole thing about territory seas act we we sabah and sarawak are not bound by the act so when you when you brought this up with, with your counterpart in in, in putrajaya what was the reaction that was the stance that we have taken. And in fact, that is something that we have included in my report, uh, the, the revision of Sabah Right Committee report, mm. uh, which I handled personally to Najib, uh, the then Prime Minister. Mm. And officially, we have also sent to KL. Sure. Uh, I'm asking what was the reaction from the KL side when, when this to, issue was raised? We have yet to uh, get any official stance from KL. Mm. Mm. Yeah, mm. but uh, for the record, that was the stance taken by the state government. And of course, uh, 
although it's strictly not part of, of MA63, the other thing that really concerns Sabahans, of course, is the PDA, the Petroleum Act of 1974. What was the stand on the committee? Uh, we, in fact, uh, did not look into the validity or rather legality of the Petroleum Development Act. Uh, I believe more because that at that time, the state government and the federal government were politically aligned. Mm. So we were in the same alliance. Uh, 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 the type of approach that we took uh, was rather different. Instead of confrontational, uh, we, we sit down, we talk, uh, but we want to be firm in our stance as well. No, I understand, so, but what were you seeking? Were you seeking a bigger royalty or ownership or what? What were you seeking? Um, in terms of the cash payment, yeah, uh, we have asked for 10% of the gross instead of the 5% mm. that we are getting nowadays. Uh, um, this is more because of the fact that uh, there is this argument that if you ask for 20%, uh, Petronas will not be able to sustain. And uh, okay, to put it simply, you, you give us another 5%. Mm -hmm. You give us the federal government entitlement of 5%. Together with our state entitlement of 5%, that will make it 10%. And did the federal government agree to this? Or it was still under discussion when you left? It was still under discussion. So the I other remember, controversial thing, yes. The other controversial thing in relates to Sabah is so-called the 40% uh, rebate. Was that discussed in your committee as well? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was one of the main uh, uh, contention in our report mm. as well. Because there is something very peculiar to the state of Sabah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, under the 10th schedule of the federal constitution, uh, we are entitled to 40% of the revenue derived from Sabah mm. by the federal government. Mm. Uh, however, you can't, a lot of people don't understand, you can't uh, take the 40% bulat bulat, as we Malaysians say. Yes. You, know, you yes. have to deduct it with the tax that has been assigned to the state. Yeah. In fact, we have uh, taken the trouble into computing how much would that be per year based on the actual figures. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it was estimated at about 1.5, 1.6 billion. Mm. Mm. It's not a uh, uh, you know, figure like 50, 60 or 100 billion. No, it's, yeah, because taking into account the, uh, tax and uh, you know levies that has been assigned to the state uh, it is so much mm. so to it, me that is doable in fact uh, to take out 1.5 billion from the federal budget of you know the federal budget yearly is about 200 over yes, 300 billion yes, yes. to take out 1.5 billion for the state of Sabah mm. it is doable yes 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 the, the, the other thing, of course, that always concerns Sabah uh, is the issue of the PTI in Sabah. Was that discussed in the committee? Sorry, say again, PTI? Yes, the PTI issue. The, the issue, because one of the things that worries Sabahans, uh, some people are linking to MS-63 because they, they claim that, you know, uh, because the federal government uh, did not respect Sabah autonomy over immigration, uh, the federal government, were well, the allegations at least, the federal government was behind the so-called uh, PTI issue in Sabah, allowing a lot of uh, illegals from Indonesia and the South It, it was not, uh, it was it not was an not issue for your committee. Our, it was not uh, discussed because we feel that that is, uh, you know, that is a separate issue by itself. Right, right, right. So, so anyway, so you compile the report. So the bottom line is that you did all the work in the committee. You compile the report. You submitted the report directly to the prime minister. But then the, the what do you call it, the federal committee at that stage uh, did not meet for the final meeting, right? They did not resolve these issues, right? Uh, soon after we sent our report to the federal government, mm -hmm. uh, there were a few discussions called by KL. Um, the last one was chaired by Datu Sri Anifa himself. Mm. 
together with uh, his steering committee members, uh, high-level officials, and also uh, cabinet ministers from Sabah and Sarawak. Mm. Yes, we did that. And yeah. was there any decisions made at that committee? Uh, at that time, it was resolved that the uh, one of them that was resolved was that the regulatory power uh, for the generation and distribution of uh, gas and electricity in Sabah mm. is to be given back to Sabah. Mm. That's mm. one of them. Yeah, and and some of the other issues like the territory boundaries, uh, the sea boundary, all those were deemed to be too too difficult to resolve. Am I correct in thinking that? Uh, well, uh, that cannot be resolved at that level. Yes, of course. I mean, I mean, yeah. my, my, my point is that the, they, they try to, to deal with the so-called easy issues first, like things that can be decentralized administratively, and they do not want to deal with the bigger issues. That's right. Now, and even uh, one, the other things that we raise in our report is the carbon touch policy, mm, mm. the abolishment of the carbon touch policy. And uh, what, was, what was the outcome? And, uh, it, it was given, it was granted. It was announced by uh, Prime Minister Najib himself in one of the visits to Sabah. And has it been implemented? I believe so. Oh, okay, okay. Now, yeah. the, the, the the other thing uh, that the uh, Sabahans are sort of sort of unhappy about in terms of the autonomy is that uh, concerns the issue of, of the island of Labuan. Uh, during your time in government, was this raised as an issue that Sabah wanted Labuan back, or it wasn't a political issue? uh it was not it was not uh, brought up in my committee ah, okay yeah. so 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 basically your committee dealt straightly with the sort of remit under ms63 so it did not deal with things like pti or the laban issue yeah because we see that, that you probably have uh, need to have a different committee to look into that sure so, so, so coming back to, to your, your early assertion that perhaps the political way is the best way to resolve federal state tensions. But given the fact that we've had this uh, federal state tension since the 1970s from the time of Mustafa Harun, uh, right. what, is the best way to, what is the best way forward then? Since that for the last 50 years, all this talking of the federal government has not essentially worked. So what is the best way forward? You see, to illustrate my point that a uh, political solution is the best solution to resolve the whole matters regarding MA63, um, take an example of the Kelantan government's case. Mm. Kelantan government once filed uh, a case to the court claiming for the 5% cash payment mm. from, from Petronas, mm. Mm. right? Uh, that was filed in I think year 2000 and I think year 2001 or 2002. It took them nine years yeah, for the matter to be heard by the federal court. And subsequently, the federal court sent the case back to the high court for the high court to decide on issues of law. Mm, mm. Right? And uh, then you have the change of government in 2018 after the 14th general election mm, mm. and soon after that i think it's always been the stance of the pakatan harapan government that they would uh, honor the people of sabah and sarawak mm. they promised to give 20 percent uh, cash payment to sabah and sarawak but whether or not they fulfill that promise that's another matter sure, sure. Uh, and and based on that kind of representation by the pakatan harapan government the Kelantan government actually withdrew the case in 2019. Mm. So what I'm saying is that you can file uh, a case to the court, but subsequently, even before determination of the case, uh, the whole thing can be superseded by political events. Sure. And subsequently, it is the polit politics that will determine. So that's uh, the reason why I'm asking you. So the way forward in terms of the political process, how should the process look like? How do you resolve a long-standing historical grievances against the federal government? How would you resolve it at a political level? I think, I think uh, the issue surrounding MA63 is, is a test on the federalism in Malaysia. 
um, it depends really on the dynamics, um, the political dynamics between the federal government and the state government. Uh, you you need to. I I would say that uh, it is the golden opportunity now. We have the golden golden opportunities to to pursue what we want for Sabah and Sarawak, because the moment you have a very strong uh, central government, it is very difficult for a state government to pursue whatever you want to claim from them. Mm. Uh, when you have uh, a weak central government, then perhaps uh, the state government can speak louder. That is the reality, Prof. Yes, but 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 the problem with, with, with that approach is that this means that it, it goes according to election cycles. So if you want to get something permanent, you probably have to at least codify in some form of a legal document, isn't it? Because if you said it's a political settlement, the problem with political settlement is that once the key players are no longer there, things change. That's right. So in, That's in right. other words, if, if you do get some sort of settlement now, uh, supposedly Putrajaya is weak now, so if you get something now, you have to codify in the law. Well, um, yes. Yes, I agree with you, Prof. Yeah. The other then thing I always some... found strange, the, all the other thing I always found strange was that, why is it that the Sabah uh, government and the Sarak government sort of did not work together in approaching uh, or, or how should I say, in negotiating with Putrajaya? Well, I very much like to see that Sabah and Sarawak, you know, take the same stance in everything, mm. particular MA63. But it so happened that, uh, you know, the political dynamics in the nation is as such that uh, Sabah and Sarawak government are on different front now. Mm, mm. Um, but, for something for, but for something like MA63, I thought it's straightforward. This is really dealing with historical grievances rather than, 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 than political self-interest. Well, uh, I don't think I'm able to answer that, Prof. <laughs> Perhaps you should have an interview with the Sabah and Sarawak chief minister. <laughs> <laughs> all right let, let me let me just just try to put the crystal ball in front of you uh given the fact that this is the third round right the first round was during the Najib administration after 2008 2013 they became very That's serious right. of ms63 they set up the federal committee uh the work was uh for lack of a better work was, was never completed then we turned to the Pakatan Harapan. They set up also a federal cabinet committee. They follow basically the same structure. They had a working committee, technical committee, everything. Uh, they went through a whole series of meetings under VK Liu. Uh, the meeting was supposed to wind up. They had more or less the final draft report. Then the government fell in late February. So now the Sabah Sarak Affairs are, is actually under uh, Sabahan uh, Dr. Max Onkili. So right. how do you foresee this being, being played out in the future? If I would ask you to guess, if you look into your crystal ball, how would this issue be played? Will they go through the whole process again, setting up another committee and relook at the issues? Or you think that maybe it's time to move it up to the next level? What is your opinion? Well, um, there has to be a committee. To me, there has to be a committee, you know, before any decision is made, there has to be uh, some papers done, you know, research and whatnot. But like I said, you, you, I mean, you were part of the previous government, you compiled a report, it gone to KL, so all the paperwork is there. The question is, what about the implementation part? Because you can't be talking forever, right? You can't go to the third round and say that because it's a new government, we set up another committee, we look at the same issues. Because when I look at some of the key issues that was during the Najib administration and during the Pakatan administration, it was the same issues that was being brought up again. At the end of the day, Prof, I think it boils down to, you know, no matter it, it, the question that we should ask is not how high level the committee is, mm -hmm. or rather, you know, uh, you know, but rather how strong the political will is to resolve. So, so what, 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 what is your guess? I mean, you have served at the very top, you were at the heart of the Sabah committee. You attended all the meetings in Putrajaya. Is there a political will on the other side? I'm talking about the Malaya side to resolve this issue or you think that, uh, you know, they, they, they still think that this thing can be managed? 
I think the political will, so far as political will is concerned, uh, Sabah and Sarawak is always stronger than the federal government. I know, but the question is, yeah. is there political will on the Malayan side, on the federal government side to resolve this issue? That has yet to be seen. So even during your time, you, you, you felt that they were not willing to give up? Uh, certain things, the federal government was still holding very tight, um, especially when it comes to financial provisions. Uh, I once raised this uh, face-to-face with uh, Najib, the mm. then Prime Minister, mm. uh, shortly before the uh, general election. And I thought that was the right time, you know, mm. to, to really push for something. Mm. Uh, but the answer given was, you know, when it comes to financial provisions, we really need to sit down and it would take time. And yeah, mm. that was what happened. So they're quite happy to negotiate on things that does not relate to money. Is that what, is that what I'm hearing from you? Um... I suppose when it comes to financial position, uh, provision, uh, the obstacles will be bigger in terms of uh, dealing with, um, you know, even the, the civil servants. Even the civil servants. Sometimes, uh, you know, in a minister level, you may want to see things done, but then there are a lot of... Uh, bureaucracy and red tapes and whatnot. So things were not moving as fast as what we expected. Okay. My final question, time is running out. So my final question is that uh, given the fact that a lot of the work was done during the, uh, you know, during your time and after that PH time, but one of the unusual things is that even though this issue is, is so public, uh, as, as you know, there are lots of people unhappy with this MA issue in Sabah and Sarawak. How come none of these reports were published in public? I don't think they contain any official secrets, right? Are you in favor of publishing these reports or you think that they should not be published? Well, I think it should be made transparent. Yes. In fact, in fact the contents of it, uh, a, lot of the, a lot of them has been made public, mm. but mm. Uh, it is just that it was not uh, published. That, you know, uh, uh, the whole thing was not published. Well, then I have, to, I, have, I have to ask you straight in the face. You were the chair of the committee. Why, 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 why didn't you publish it? Well, um, it is not for me to decide. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you submitted your report first to the Sabah State Cabinet, right? And you were the chair of the committee, right? You could have requested for your report to be published, to be a public document. Well, um, I, I, I would, I believe that, uh, you know, certain things, uh, it is best done, uh, you know, I mean, at that time between the state and the federal government, we mm. maintain a very good relationship. Mm. So with that kind of, uh, communication, uh, mm. it will be easier for us to resolve things rather than making everything, uh, exposed under the sun mm, mm. but 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 my point is that things like this doesn't really deal with national security so after a passage of time there, there, it, there, there's really no reason for it to be kept under the osa would i be right in saying that well well i hope uh, one day it can be published <laughs> and you will support that i will all right well, thank you very much, Dr. Tio. I think, I think uh, that we have learned a lot 